You are no longer Eric Snodgrass from <laughs> Nutrien, but you are Eric Snodgrass from? Conduit, yeah. And what is Conduit? Conduit is a new kind of e-commerce platform for ag. So we're trying to reach a certain demographic of growers that um, you know, would like to be able to have access to certain bundles of chemicals and things that they need throughout the year and have it drop shipped to them and uh, also have access to a tremendous amount of financing backed by farm credit. So we're right now through 2025 offering 0% financing on all ag input loans, which is huge. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a name and a reputation as a trusted source in ag, and we just want to fill a niche. And that niche is, I think, one that uh, likes an e-commerce platform. So why I went to it is it, it gave me just a tremendous amount of flexibility to be who I am and talk to the world about, about weather. And, and they're very much interested in anything that causes risk to the grower and to provide solutions. So I'm their weather risk guy, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I love Nutrien, amazing company, amazing people. I just saw a different opportunity and just decided to jump at it. All right. Now, you're, you said you wanted to talk to the world about weather. Yeah. Talk, talking to the world. <laughs> That's right. Here. Um, a lot of farmers are, are wondering, uh, they, they know kind of what happened to the crops at the end of the year. We yeah. lost, lost some water, yeah. some things changed. We've had a very dry end of the summer. Are we having a dry winter? Is that going to continue on into a splatting season next year? Well, you got to remember, winter's automatically our driest season. So even if it snows a bunch, who cares? We lose a lot of that. It sublimates or it melts and runs off. So the dry fall is the critical thing you mentioned. And the reality here is that we zapped a lot of subsurface soil moisture, and it's still gone. And I think the, the greatest test on that is just to look at the Mississippi River, because that drains all of it. And the Mississippi at Memphis right now is six and a half feet below low stage. And if it doesn't recover in the next, let's call it four to five months, that means we didn't put moisture back into that soil. So the river's really your test against who's got water and who doesn't. And the Missouri, the Ohio, and the upper Mississippi are all very low at this point. So I look at that and that's just one you know, box that's checked into next year that I'm concerned about. Now, those things that are going to provide us some weather, um, some people look at La Nina or El Nino. Mm -hmm. You look at something called a PDO. <laughs> yeah. Well, we all know El Nino and La Nina as being the cold water along the, ec the equator, but you really got to watch the cold water that's in the Gulf of Alaska. The most common trait of the atmosphere and ocean leading into dried episodes in the Midwest is really cold water in the Gulf of Alaska. And so when we start to see it already in the fall, we're just like, okay, is this, does that mean we need to be thinking about it for next year? Now, by the way, we're talking about a, a growing season that's still five months away from starting. So this is all speculative, but we're trying to apply the scientific method to it to say, all right, if we have this worry, is there any reason for the worry? So the cold ocean temperatures along the west coast of North America plus the fall drought are just two things that I'm saying, hey, this doesn't look right going into 2025 unless spring rains come along and fix it all. Anything out there that we should watch for to indicate whether those spring rains will come? Oh, yeah, yeah, good question. So every year that we've had plenty of moisture, this thing called the Bermuda Highs over Bermuda, big area of high pressure, just pumps the moisture around its southern side into the Gulf of Mexico, and it pulls it right into the Midwest United States, and it rains. 2024, the Bermuda High was in Bermuda most of summer. It left in September, went all the way to Africa. So what happened? September and October were bone dry. Uh, spring of 2023, the Bermuda High went to Canada bone dry. Summer of 24, it was in place. So next year, if anything steals the momentum from the atmosphere, pushes the Bermuda high away, that's when we start to build in drought. So as we're looking for some moisture next year during yes. the growing season, we want to put our bets on a Bermuda high. That's it. Uh, as, as, as being that indicator. That is, I mean, that everything else in the atmosphere that changes will affect the Bermuda high. And if it's in place, we're in good shape. Okay. Are you, do you have any money on it right now? <laughs> Zero. I don't bet on my forecast, are you kidding me? <laughs> we're pretty darn good at being wrong, Stu. So I, I, you know, that's why I said, so the odds, we have to just think about the odds. Uh, of the three things I just told you about, when they've looked like this in fall, only six in 10 years in the next year were dry. That means four in 10 didn't. 2009 is a classic example. If it, was, if it was 2008 right now, the end of 2008 going to 2009, I would have gave that same talk. I was like, oh my goodness, it's cold in the Gulf of Alaska, big La Nina, depleted soil moisture. We better watch out next year. 
But from now, in 2009, so January 2009 to like May, the ocean temperatures warmed, the Bermuda hike came back, and 2009 it was cool and wet, and we had huge yields. So we have to remember that that is a possibility as well. If I really knew Stu, we wouldn't be talking, right? I mean, that's, I'll call you, you and I could place a bet together and we'll both retire, right? But that's the way of it.